And here we're going to talk about standing waves in air columns. So let's say we have a, um, um, an open container, uh, like a pipe, called a pipe. It's open on one side and it's closed on the other side. So that's considered actually a closed pipe situation. We also have situations where, they're, where the pipes are open on both sides and that would then be considered an open pipe. So this is an example of a closed pipe. So let's just write that down. On the far side, so sound goes into the pipe, travels down the pipe, hits the other side, and then returns back in this direction. Now, if the outgoing wave is in phase with the incoming wave, we then have what we call constructive interference, and then we would hear a louder sound. So a person over here listening to sound coming back out would hear a much louder sound coming out of the pipe if the wave coming back is in sync with the wave going in so that you have constructive interference. So how do you get constructive interference? Well, one thing we have to understand is that when the wave hits the end of the pipe and comes back, there will be a 180 degree phase shift because the density of air is less than the density of the material of the pipe, which causes the wave to flip over instantly by a half a wavelength. Then, hence the 180 degree phase shift. Also, we have to understand that this is what we call a displacement node. So if the wave coming in and the wave going out have zero displacement at the moment it hits the very end, at that point when there's no variation in the position of the air molecules relative to, the, uh, relative to their normal position, that would mean that at the very same moment there is a pressure antinode because of course they're 90 degrees out of phase and that means that the difference in the pressure at that point is a maximum from its normal so the maximum difference in the pressure and therefore uh, it kind of like the wave kind of bounces off the, the side and starts going back now normally let's imagine that this represents the um, what we call the displacement so if this is S versus position, so the displacement. Notice that if there's no displacement at the very moment when the wave gets to the end, normally the wave, of course, if there was no end, would continue like this, and if there was no phase shift, the wave simply would come back in this direction. Now, if that was the case, notice we have uh, a node in the, or a displacement in the maximum direction here, displacement in the, in the other direction here, they would cancel each other out, and you would hear no sound coming out the other side. But because there's a phase shift, what happens then, and let me use a different color for that, because of the phase shift, really what happens then is that we get a 180 degree shift. This is a 180 degree shift. And of course, the wave doesn't continue on past the edge of the pipe because there's a wall there. It would then gets bounced back, and the bounced back wave goes in this direction. Notice, because of the phase shift, it now is exactly in phase with the incoming wave, and now we have what we call constructive interference. The waves are in phase with one another, the incoming wave and the outgoing wave, so we hear a much louder sound coming out. So if the wave, if the wave coming in is in sync with the wave going out, we have constructive interference, we hear a loud sound. Twice the amplitude of the sound of the wave coming in because of that situation. But of course, everything has to be just right. The conditions are that we have to have what we call a displacement node at the end, meaning maximum pressure at this point, and then we have the maximum sound coming on the other side because we have a perfect setup, we have a perfect constructive interference situation. What we're going to do now in the next videos is now that hopefully you understand this, we're going to look at the various situations in which we can come up with what we call standing waves, depending upon the length of the pipe and the frequency of the sound going in. And I'll show you some examples of how we get the, you know, the, the, what we call the base frequency and then the other frequencies depending upon the length of the pipe and the frequency of the sound. So stay tuned, come and watch the other videos to see all the various scenarios of how we can have standing waves in closed pipes and in open pipes.